Hello and welcome once again to the Ferret Business Podcast. I am your host, as always, Yemi the Ferret, a.k.a. Yemi. And with me today is another up-and-coming horror tube, uh, YouTuber who has over 200 subscribers and has a very nice beard, F. Vash. Of course, he's F. Vash on YouTube, and at Harvey is Flirt on Twitter. Vash, how you doing? Hey, how you doing, man? I'm doing pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> All things considered, yeah. So we were actually just chatting like a second ago before the podcast started about your um, Slenderman uh, drinking game. <laughs> <laughs> I I was hoping you could just kind of, you know, re-go over a little bit of what you said about it. Well, I, I um, have a tendency to do um, just, just insanely random shit just because I... <laughs> I don't know, I have a short attention span, and I was just like, oh, hey, why don't I do this? For no reason whatsoever, completely out of left field. I haven't drank in probably eight, maybe ten months, and I was like, I'm just going to go and grab a bottle of Jack Daniels, because I used to drink Jack Daniels forever ago. Uh -huh. And I'm going to play Slender the Arrival, which I also haven't played in forever. And every time Slendy catches me, I'll take a shot. I wound up killing a uh, pint of Jack Daniels in less than two hours. <laughs> oh man, how's your how's your liver feeling? Is it screaming? I woke up this morning actually with my uh, liver sitting next to me, drinking a cup of coffee, calling me a dick. So <laughs> that's that's great. <laughs> yeah, I, I I think the only hard liquor I really drink is Jack Daniels, Daniels too. But um, I need I need to be a Jack and Coke. I can't drink it straight. I bought Coke. I was going to make Jack and Coke, but for some reason, I just set the Coke down next to me. And I never opened it. Again, I have no idea what I'm doing from one moment to the next. It's just kind of. <laughs> so, uh, I I think you're the first interviewee that you don't have the same Twitter name as you do on YouTube. Um, no. So, where did F Fash come from? <laughs> Nobody knows what that stands for. No one. Not no, even not I've even yourself. Asked, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I have been asked many, many times what the F stands for. Does it stand for flirt? Because you're you you have flirt as your as, as your thing on um, Twitter. I'm like, no. <laughs> what does F stand for? Your, your first name doesn't begin with an F. No. <laughs> so I, I kind of. Um, the F really stands for whatever I want it to, I guess. <laughs> Whenever people will ask and be like, hey, what's the F stand for? I'm like, guess. And they're like, you know, Frank? Frederick? Like, no, it's Fre Frodo. <laughs> Frederick. <laughs> whatever. <laughs> so I, always thought it, I, thought, I always thought it was a fantastic, the fantastic Vash. <laughs> no, I, well, I wish, but no. It's <laughs> it, it actually came from the fact that um, when doing the... Uh, uh, the, the Google setup, you know, for, for YouTube, you have to put in a first and a last name. Mm -hmm. And I just, I've always, my handle's Vash, so I didn't really have a first name. Oh, okay. It's like, what the fuck am I going to put in here? Fuck. Oh, yes, F. So that's <laughs> really how it came across. <laughs> well, that damn Google, when they merged accounts, they, they really screwed the pooch, I say. Oh, they did. So your beard has gotten to—I uh, would—I would believe—I believe it had gotten to ship captain status now. Would you say <laughs> something like that? <laughs> yeah, my mine's not really past anything. You know, the manly part of things. I'm—I'm I'm probably about at like a, a caveman. I don't know. And uh, <laughs> I usually have to keep it this way because I—I I, I start to look Amish very, very quickly. And of course, everyone in, and their mother goes, you know, they, they come up to me and be like, oh, are, are you Amish? I'm like, no, I'm Italian. <laughs> <laughs> What's the most annoying, annoying thing for you having a beard? I, I think the most annoying thing about it is the, um, is the fact that it almost has become a staple. I joked with some friends the other day that, um, Again, just random shit pops in my head and immediately comes out of my mouth. And right. Like, I think I want to shave. 
And then, like, every one of my friends, they were in a completely different live stream, and I'm just saying this on Twitter and DM, and they're like, did Vash shave? Oh, God, tell me he didn't shave. And <laughs> just to be a dick, I threw, like, an old picture up in chat of me without a beard. <laughs> <laughs> so, the, the, I, guess, I guess the staple aspect of it's kind of the most annoying thing. Right, yeah. I, I really don't like how I look without the beard, so I'm kind of stuck with it, I guess. But, I, I just... Everyone, everyone's gotta be like, um, oh, you look so Amish today. It's like, oh. It's not even that long. It's, it's, it's like it's like an inch, not even. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I, I didn't actually grow the beard out for any particular reason. It just kind of happened. Yeah, that's, that's how it happened to me, too. I was I was young, and I was like, you yeah, know, I think I'll grow up my facial hair. And it's, it's stuck ever since. Right. So, let's talk about something that I know is very important to you, and that would be dealing with anxiety. And you are a YouTuber dedicated to an anxiety awareness, is that correct? Yes. Um, can, you, so. can you explain a little bit about how anxi anxiety has affected your life? Uh, yes. Uh, I, I don't mind. I can talk about that. I used to not be able to talk about that, but I can now. Well, congratulations. That's that's great. Yeah, a step in the right direction, right? It's, uh... The job I used to work, which I won't go too much into the job or anything, but the job I used to work uh, was very stressful. Most people that work that job eventually... Either... The, the, the ones that retire are very, very few. Most people either have some type of breakdown, um, there's a high mortality rate, just, just it's a very, very stressful environment, mm -hmm. and I fell into that percentage of people that had a breakdown. I, I cracked. So I developed uh, PTSD, um, severe anxiety, uh, depression, dissociative personality disorder, a couple lists of things. Mm -hmm. And it made having a a social life pretty much impossible. Mm. And I wound up spending about four years sitting on my couch in one spot, playing Star Wars The Old Republic over and over again. I have every character in that game, a male and female version. Each one of them is capped and has at least tier two or three gear. Wow. <laughs> so, and, I, and I hate MMOs. <laughs> so, <laughs> it, uh, stayed in therapy, and the longer I was in therapy, the more I started researching. I'm, I'm the type of person that wants to know exactly what it is that's going on with me. Right, yeah. So... The longer I stayed with that, the more I started also studying. I'm not I'm not a expert by any stretch of the imagination, but when I started speaking with uh, to my newest counselor, you know, we, we got on the subject about how I used to make how I used to make movies with uh, another YouTuber, a friend of mine, back before we started doing YouTube. <clears throat> and this was even before I started doing YouTube. He mm -hmm. did YouTube before me. Uh, his name is John Siebel. And we would do like movies and little skits and stuff. I always loved creating things. We always loved creating media. And she's like, well, "Why don't you do that?" I don't know. It almost feels like it'd be getting. Almost feels like being naked in front of the art class with the <laughs> condition that I'm in. Yeah. And she kept bringing it up. It was like the way she put it, and what finally got me to do it, it was that it's socializing without having to actually socialize. Well, yeah, I understand that, yeah. So I can do YouTube, and I can, you know, kind of be myself because I'm looking at the camera, and I know there's people that's going to see it, and I talk to them, I talk to everybody I can, and but it's easier because I'm not physically there, I'm not looking at them. Right, yeah. So that, I was like, well, if I'm going to do this... I want to at least try and do something good with it. I'm not cured. <laughs> I'll never be cured. That that doesn't happen. There there is no cure for some of these conditions. There's management. And 
I figure if I'm going to try and crawl through the trenches with this, maybe I can bring a few people along with me that have some similar issues. And that's really where it started. Wow. That's that's a great story. And I'm glad I'm glad you're able, able to share that now and um, talk about it, you know, as openly as you are right now. If you would have called me a month ago, it wouldn't have happened. But <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious, I'm, I'm making strides, and I'm going to keep doing. I'll go, go ahead and apologize now if the, if the stutters come out. Oh no, it's fine. It's about. fine. I can edit those in my videos because I can like scroll all the way in on like the the, the audio track and you know, <laughs> snip. Yeah. So. Um. I, I saw um, recently you posted um, on Twitter that horror movies actually help you with your anxiety. Right. Um, so what's your favorite horror movie to watch when you're starting to feel a little anxious? Uh, either... I have a few, but um, Hellraiser is always a great one. The Exorcist, The Dead oh, Horizon. Yeah. yeah. I love those. And anything really theological... Theological horror is very much my my preferred. You know, there's nothing wrong with slashers and stuff like that that people, that people enjoy. But but for me, the theological horror, possessions and stuff like that, are always the most fascinating. <laughs> is for me. And the, the thing about horror films, and, and how you brought that up, that how it helps me, is that I did a... I've, I've collected a lot of articles on this, and I, some of them I've posted on Twitter, some are actually posted on my YouTube page. And there are actually studies done by psychologists, uh, a lot of people with names I cannot pronounce. <laughs> That's why I have their links posted, because I would just butcher them. I butcher all names. If anybody ever watches my videos, I butcher everybody's names. I'd butcher mine if it wasn't just, you know, one fucking syllable, but... <laughs> I there's been studies about it how horror films can help some people with anxiety. It doesn't work for everybody, but nothing works for everybody. But the the kind of controlled shock because when you're anxious, when you have anxiety, you see the guy on like the the commercial for the insurance company, the guy that's always going you know, you see the car pulling out, then it gets hit. You know, by an oncoming car, then the guy walks on the screen and goes, nobody ever thinks this could happen to them. Yeah. If you have anxiety, you believe it's going to happen to you. Mm -hmm. Every time. You believe it's going to happen to you when you're sitting in your in, in your living room. So, but with the horror films, you're always in that state of kind of hyper-awareness with anxiety. So when you're watching the horror films, if you're one of those people that it helps, that controlled shock it's almost like unraveling knots. Mm. You know, you see something happen, you see something vicious happen, you see something bad happen, but it's happening on the screen. It's immediate, goes through, and then when it's over, you're like, I'm still okay. Hmm. That's interesting. Right now, there are 40 million, last, last count, last, last census, there are 40 million people that suffer from a form of anxiety, either wow. moderate to severe. And those are just the numbers of the adults in the United States. That does not include children or people in other countries. Man. There's not a accurate list on the people that get released from horror films, but there are studies on it. And if anybody wants to do a Google search, they can find it or don't even have to subscribe to my channel. I, I don't care if anybody does that or not, but if they are interested in the subject, I do have the um, links there. The links are also pinned to, to my Twitter account, so if anybody is actually interested in what those doctors have to say and the studies on it, they can check it. And I've also posted links for people that talk about how horror films bother their anxiety. So I wanted to make sure that I was fair and put links from both both sides of the of the coin there. Oh, okay, so. okay. Yeah, the links to your channel and your Twitter will be down below in the description if anyone wants to check that out, of course. Right. That's that's awesome. That's great. Cuz it's information that I would like I could care less if anybody I mean, it's cool adding people to the community. I love that. But the ultimate goal is definitely spreading awareness about anxiety and depression. 
it's one of the reasons I play the games the way I do. I mean, if you, I don't do walkthroughs. Mm -hmm. I don't do achievement hunts. If you're looking on how to beat a game, I'm the wrong person to watch. My entire thing is poking a stick at the darkness and running away giggling madly so you don't have to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that's great. That's great. Um, so I, I kind of want to switch gears here. Um, so you played the demo for Agony on your channel, which is a game that a lot of people are really interested in. Um, can you kind of describe your experience while playing that game? Was it was it really good? Was it Outlast kind of like? How 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 did it feel for you? Agony was a very interesting interesting experience. The reason I played now when I did Agony, I did it as a live stream, and I felt kind of responsible to do it as a live stream. I've seen a lot of people play Agony and they just put the video up, mm -hmm. and do a little warning, and walk away. But I kind of wanted to mediate because Agony's got some pretty extreme shit in it. it really yeah, I does. saw. Yeah. <laughs> it really does. So I kind of wanted to be there to mediate. And but I wouldn't really compare Agony to Outlast. I, Agony to me really feels like it's its own thing. Mm, okay. I've never played anything like this. I mean, sure, it's got some elements from Outlast. It's got some elements from maybe Slender or any game that you really can't fight back and you have to kind of run away. But if you do too much running away, if you do too much running away in agony, you're going to get caught. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. You're going to get caught. You're going to get hit up. The thing about agony is really stealth. You can, you can run away a bit, but while you're running away, you need to find somewhere to <laughs> to hide or somewhere to get because the right. creatures in agony will catch you. But it's such a... I hate to use the word beautiful <laughs> because the <laughs> entire game takes place in hell, but... yeah, It is... The, the job that they did with it is just phenomenal. I have seriously never played a horror game like it. And I'm very anxious to get the, get the full release when it happens. What was your uh, favorite um, I guess you could say demon that you met during the game? Definitely the pit fiend, I guess I'll call it. The one at the very bottom of the pit. It's... The second time I played it, I made it down to the bottom where you had a... Uh, where you had the big, big pit monster that you had to <laughs> possess in order to go on. And just the art style on that, on that creature was just just mind-blowing it reminded me of kind of like a cross between like oh lord i don't know what, what do they call that um creature in the lord of the rings uh da, 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 da. balrog i think oh the balrog yes oh, big, big yeah. fiery guy yes i have now officially pissed off every lord of the rings fan on the planet because <laughs> i did not know that name <laughs> yeah but it reminded me like a cross of that and the um and like the bound and blind demons that you found in Dante's Inferno, like in the background, just kind of like. Oh, okay, you know. yeah, yeah. So I loved that. the The art style is phenomenal. So, what would you say your favorite horror game is that you played so far? My favorite horror game. Like, is there one is... that you kind of go back to every every so often, or? Oh yes. Oh yes, absolutely. My fa my favorite horror game is Alan Wake. Oh, Alan Wake. Nice. Absolutely. I love Alan Wake. I never get tired of that game. <clears throat> is there something about it that keeps you coming back or is it just just a good game overall? Yeah, well it is it is a it's a fantastic game, but there is something that keeps me coming back to it. Um Alan Wake is probably one of the more the character of Alan is probably one of the more realistic characters I've come across in a horror game. Or, I mean, th this guy is, uh, well, until recently, I've been playing Remothered recently, and the um, and the main character in that, she's also very realistic. But uh, in Alan Wake, you're playing a guy who's not, you know, he has no skills outside of writing. Mm -hmm. His ability to use a gun is very limited. His sprint, lasts for maybe three seconds 
he's he's a, he's very much a normal individual put into an extraordinary situation and instead of being able to become a superhero type character the entire game you get the feel that he's still just doing his best to struggle through the situation and they never break character on that they never they never make him more than a normal guy mm-hmm. and th- and that always resonated a lot with me whenever whenever playing the game hmm that's cool that's cool I'm glad you uh have a game that you can latch on to like that yeah right um kind of uh kind of the last question here um Resident Evil 7 mm-hmm. well, it, ha- it has a lot of um a lot of different opinions on it and I just wanted to get your opinion on it since my fiance and I recently just finished uh playing through the game ourselves uh, love Resident Evil 7 <laughs> <laughs> oh I loved it I absolutely loved it I almost didn't play it Almost. It was actually the first Resident Evil game that I almost did not play. And the reason is is because I love VR. I'm a VR enthusiast. And just lack of a lack of a better term, when VR for Res 7 was ex- exclusively to the PS4, I, I'll admit it, I, I got ass hurt. That's what <laughs> happened. Okay. I, got, I got all types of angry. Yeah, yeah cried foul and it just probably probably one of the more dumb incidents in my life just you know, when VR <laughs> bastards but that. and I met this guy on the um, forums and a friend of mine in Twitter now as well named uh, Reggie Centeno and he was always cool with me whenever you know he, he's a big supporter of the game and I was always you know crying foul and he's always like man relax the game's still cool like but I want VR he's like man it's fine without VR he was just always he was always really cool and I was like alright fine so when the gold edition came out I did pick it up and 10 minutes into it (laughs) (laughs) I I, I, the intro I I did the game I actually replayed it on Madhouse mode for my channel it was my first let's play and at the very beginning of the video I gave a I gave a a shout out to him (laughs) it was like I appreciate it so (laughs) much. (laughs) I loved it. I thought 7 was really a step back to what made Resident Evil great. Mm. It wasn't... 6, you know, 5 was okay, but but like 6 and them, it just felt like they were getting closer and closer to what happened with Dead Space 3. Oh, yeah, yeah. Much more action and less horror. I mean, my favorite Resident Evils were always like one, two, three, Code Veronica. But the seven, seven really brought it back to that horror environment, and I, I absolutely adore it. Well, you heard it here first, folks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought I thought Resident Evil Seven was a very well put together game, and um, anyone who hasn't gotten it yet because they're antsy about it being first person or this or that, they. You should you should give it a try. It's definitely worth it with the asking price nowadays. Mm-hmm. Uh, and if you got the VR, you know it's a nice little add-on. It, it it really gets you into that into the game a lot more. And a fun fact: if you have an um, Oculus or an HTC Vive, and you really really want to play VR, Google Vorpex. It's called V O R P X, I think. I mean, I'm I'm not. I'm not affiliated with them or anything. But, no, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah, but um, Vorpex is this neat driver that's out there that you can buy that lets you play non-VR games in VR. And what and it, it's kind of a cheap VR, but it does work. What they do is they play with the field of view for any game that you upload through it. Oh, cool! That's that's incredible. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. I mean, I got it, and then I I tried out uh, Dead Space One. I tried out uh, Dragon Age Origins. Then of course I played through Resident Evil Seven, mm-hmm. <laughs> and it is it works really good. Uh, but it's mainly just a field of field of view manipulate. It, it was pretty cool. All right, well I just want to thank F Fash once again for coming on the podcast, giving his story, putting it out there. I really appreciate it. I feel a lot more educated in the subject of anxiety now, and I'm definitely going to go read those articles about it that you talked about. Um, 
Uh, is there any um, anything else you want to add before uh, we say our goodbyes? Hi. <laughs> All right. Well, you heard the man. <laughs> um, so yeah, this has been uh, the Ferret Business Co- Podcast with me today, F Fash. His links will be down in the description, of course, Twitter and YouTube. Um, and as always, I am the host, Yummy the Ferret, and I hope to see you in the next episode.